Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RS Aquaculture. So in this video, I'll be going through in detail how does a protein schema actually works and I'll be explaining a lot of its functionalities and what are the controls that are available on the schema that we use every day in our farms. So stay tuned. Welcome back guys. For those that are new to RS Aquaculture, we produce weekly content on shrimp farming as well as smart crab farming. So if you'd like to get our weekly updates, do like and subscribe so that you can get a notification. So back to our video content for today. So you might already know we have been using protein schemas and they are widely used in RAS systems and also bioflock systems. So in our cases, we have actually a feeder pump that feeds the water into a schema which you see over here and this schema is actually located in our holding tank in which we will hold and quarantine our crabs so if you look at the main body of the schema what it consists of is actually a transparent portion in our case this schema is actually built on acrylic so that you can see the inner workings of the schema which makes it really very cool unlike other schemas Right, and this is where you see the water that is traveling back into the tank. So we have actually show you the inlet and the outlets. In these cases, they are actually pointing to the same tank, and we're using a small pump to pump into the protein schema as you see over here. Right. So what does the schema actually does? What it does is it provides aeration to remove some of the solid waste. As you can see, if I close the air intake, you will see that the aeration in the protein schema will slowly reduce because now we have actually choked the schema by blocking its air intake valve. As you can see, once it's lack of aeration, you can see that the water will start to clear up, indicating the air is not actually being introduced into the schema. And once you release the air intake valve, and you can see a gush of air bubbles that are being introduced into the schema which is responsible for removing the waste. So perhaps at this point it will be good for us to discuss how actually a protein schema actually works. Unlike other types of filtration which utilize a sieve to remove a waste, a protein schema actually use air bubbles to remove some of the smaller suspended solids especially if they are smaller than 30 microns. The removal mechanism is based on the fact that the smaller particles will adhere itself on the bubbles and eventually be removed as the bubbles are traveling up towards the protein schema into the collection cup which you see over here. So you can see a lot of scum or brownish particles actually exist in the foam and the foam is being carried out into the collection cup and to be disposed of. So as you might think, a schema is capable of producing both coarse bubble and fine bubble aeration. Generally, a schema will be much more efficient if the air bubble is actually of a smaller size because there is actually more surface area available for the small particles to adhere to and being removed from the schema. So it is very common for some of the schema to utilize a venturi or a needle wheel pump so that it can create bubbles that are very fine to increase the efficiency. Although commercial models do not really use needle wheel pumps and it's more exists in the hobbies model or what we see over here which utilize the needle wheel pump as well. After the waste has been collection, collected in the waste collection cup, usually we will divert it to another waste bin where it is actually kept and hold for, which is what you see over here. As you can see, the waste from the schema is actually very, very dark in color, indicative that the efficiency of the schema is actually being achieved. If your waste from the schema is actually very watery and there's not much of a solid, meaning that you will have to adjust some aspect of the protein schema, which I will be covering next. The most common problems that operators have is that their schemas are pulling out too much water and their waste are not concentrated as what you see earlier on. Or the other extreme is their schemas simply do not produce any waste from the collection cup. So the first thing you might have to adjust is actually the outlet valve in the schemas.
By closing more of the outlet valve, what you are doing is you are diverting more flow into the waste collection cup as the water level actually increases in your protein schema. So this is not a problem if you were not previously getting any foam coming up from a collection cup, but it might create a situation that you have too much of a water that is coming up from the top. So take note of this. The second piece of equipment that you might be able to adjust is the needle wheel pump speed. As you might already know, the needle wheel pump is responsible for introducing aeration into the skimmer. And if we can increase the power that is given to the pump by increasing the voltage, what tends to happen is that the pump will be able to spin at a faster rate and in result, they will create more aeration than what you see over here. So this is a good tool to increase the amount of air available to the schema to be removed the amount of solid. So you can adjust this to improve the efficiency of the schema, but also to ensure that more foam is actually being diverted into the collection cup and hence increasing the amount of solid that you remove into this collection. But you might also excessively remove too much by increasing too much aeration. So these are the two things that you could adjust to ensure that the effluent that you get from your schemas is actually very thick, right? Which is what you see over here. So this is another schema that we actually use in the operation of a crab farm. So for this model, we have actually stopped it for a while because the DC controller is under maintenance and you get to see it actually being empty without any water. So similar to the previous case, we actually introduced water via inlet line, which is what you see over here. This line is actually one inch and it connects directly into the venturi and it connects to a needle wheel pump and it's being introduced into the schema here. And the outlet actually goes on top on a one and a half inch line, which is just behind the inlet line and it goes back into the pump. So similarly, all schemas will have a valve to control the amount of outflow and water level inside the schema and we also use a DC controller to control the pump that is responsible for removal. Uh, the schema also will include uh, several functions for ease of maintenance. You can actually remove the collection cup by unscrewing this one or two bolts that you can remove it so that you can wash the collection cup if it becomes too dirty over time. Right, so this schema is also equipped with a waste collection bin for us to throw out the waste on a two day or three day basis. So, this is actually how the schemas are being packed and shipped to overseas. We actually have two units over here. So, in the next video, I'll be showing you the unboxing video of the schemas and we will try to assemble one unit together. So, hopefully, guys, you have learned a great deal about protein schema and how do they work and what are the typical control system. So, I'll see you again back at the next video and do like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.